Greetings and welcome to this video that considers another problem in strength of materials and going to cover another problem regarding combined stresses. Now this particular problem combines three different types of normal stresses. You may have read in the book which is Mott's Applied Strength of Materials 5th edition that it simply asks you to find the stress at M and N. Now in fact there is also an applied shear stress here. It wasn't all that clear but we will simply consider the normal stresses denoted with a sigma. The first thing to note is that the force here is at an angle and the other thing is that it's offset from the centroidal axis of this W12 by 16 member. So we have to consider a variety of issues here. First thing we're going to consider is the fact that this force should be broken up into horizontal and vertical components. Now in the book, theta was 40 degrees, so here that is. You can, of course, change the angle and you'll get different results. So if I take the components, break this angled force down, I get PX equals 45, almost 4,600 pounds. But I just put this into a spreadsheet, so I'm just going to write down what Excel gave me. And then PY is going to be negative 38.57 pounds. And that's breaking it in components using our favorite equations PX equals P times the cosine of the angle and PY equals P times the sine of the angle. And you really want to be technical this is a negative 40 degrees because it is going clockwise down from the positive x-axis. Now I may or may not use this negative sign as I calculate just because uh, it gets taken away uh, in our uh, moment equation but that's going to be a little further down the path. Okay so now we see that we've got two forces px and py these two forces each exert different stresses on this setup here, this member. So I'm going to, going to break it down and do one force at a time. So let's start with PX. If I just look at it as PX, I've got Here is a real quick setup here. If you'll notice, our force is not along the axis, it's off of the axis here, which means it's not axial, it's eccentric. So we use our eccentric loading formula. Stress equals plus or minus force over area plus or minus the force times E, the eccentricity, times C, which is the distance from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber, conveniently where N and M are. And that all gets divided by the area moment of inertia of that member here where N and M are. So these are the two types of stresses that this one force PX gives us. This here is as if it were axial right along the axis and this here is the eccentric. So I'm just going to calculate those first, just the force over the area. So force over the area, the axial 
ends up being 976 psi. So simply the force over the area. And I'm using the area of the W12 by 16. And you can look that up in any standard reference. So we've got 976 psi. Now the eccentric is dependent on, of course, the force, which we have Px, times E, the eccentricity, which is the distance from the force, which is parallel, to the axis here. And that's 12 inches because we have 6 inches here and then half of the depth of the W shape. And that's 6 inches there. So obviously 6 plus 6 is 12. And then C is the distance from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber. And so that's that 6 inches that we were just talking about. Because the W12 by 16 has a depth of 12 inches here. And so the distance from the neutral axis, which is halfway through, because this is symmetric, the distance C is 6 inches from the neutral axis to M or from the neutral axis to N. So it makes things a little bit easier there. And when you plug all that in, PEC over I is 3,213 PSI. Okay. Okay, so we've got those two taken care of. Now, we have to deal with these positive and negative things. These are going to be different, perhaps, depending our location and directions and stuff. So here's M, and here's N right up here. Now, the force over area, as if it were axial, is going to be the same no matter what. So if this PX were actually right along this line, M and N would be seeing the exact same axial load, and that's what this is here. So we are simply going to use the positive for both of them. So uh, because it's in tension, it's pulling out, pulling away. So both of them get positive. So M is positive, and N is positive. Now this PEC over I is comes from this moment that this PX is creating around the centroidal axis and that point that happens to be what that plane is. So it's making this uh, counterclockwise rotation which is seeking to push N in and pull M out. So if I have a point right here in the middle, if I had a hinge right there, N would be going into the material, M would be coming out of the material. So N is in compression and M is in tension. That is where we are uh, going to stop with PX. So M is positive 976 PSI plus 3,213 PSI. N is going to be positive or intention 976 PSI and minus 3,213 PSI. Okay, but we're not done yet. We need to consider PY. We did PX on N and M, whereas PY, we have a different kind of stress. So let's look at that. Okay, so here's PY. And this should look not terribly unfamiliar to you by, by this point in the course, because this is simply a cantilever. Make sure you know it's fixed here, as it was over here. This is just a cantilever. It's a type of beam. It's just a diving board, whatever you want to call it. It's just a cantilever. So we know that the moment that this creates around points M or N, the very location where this is fixed in here is just the force 
times the distance to eminent, the vertical force, horizontal distance. And that horizontal distance is 52 inches. So if we have a fixed end here, we have a moment that counteracts the moment that P has. So P is doing a clockwise moment. Here's a moment um, we'll call it Q because we already have a location M. We have a moment PY times the distance here and that's got to be counteracted by Q. And the way we do that is we sum the moments about say uh, we'll call this point A that's in the middle here. Some of the moments about point A, they have to equal zero. And those are PY times the length plus the moment Q. And this is clockwise, so this is this. So it's pretty easy to solve, of course. Q equals PY times L. So there's this moment Q here. And that's the moment that is exerted right at the support, the connection where this member meets the wall. So that's also where the maximum moment is. So we can find our bending stress. Our bending stress normal bending stress is mc over i and we have already used um, i and c here or you could use m over s because we have a standard shape we have a w12 by 16 so the s is easily available to be found and when that's all said and done, that stress is a lot. 11,728 PSI. Now the question is, is it going to be positive or negative at N and M? Of course, now that we are applying a clockwise moment, whereas before here we were doing a counterclockwise moment, it's going to be opposite. M is going to be under compression and N is going to be under tension. So if A was a hinge, then M would be going into the support, N would be coming out of the support. So M here is going to be negative 11,728 PSI and N is going to be positive 11,728 PSI. So that is the stress at the upper and lower positions and that's why we used C here or S due to a bending moment that PY exerted. So it's different than PX. It's got its own thing. So we needed to add that in the mix as well. So once we're all said and done, M has a total of negative 7,539 and N has a total of 9,491. So the negative, of course, here means that it's in compression, and the positive here means, of course, that it's in tension. These units are in PSI. Now, the final numbers here, uh, they might not add up perfectly. I'm pulling them off of the uh, spreadsheet that I did. And so if you used st um, 
if you used appropriate significant digits, you'd probably end up with what the book has, which is a little bit different than these two. Uh, but you'd still be well within uh, a reasonable uh, round-off error range. To recap, this is a combined stresses problem, not just using two, but three different types of stresses. We had to break it down from an angled force into two components of the force and then look at each one separately. So we looked at PX separately. We realized it was offset or eccentric. So we used our eccentric loading formula and we have an axial one that uh, just gives us 976 PSI. That would be what it is if it was right along the axis, but it's not. So we have to use the eccentric one, which gives us 3213 PSI. Now, it depends on where you're at to whether we're, you're going to use positive or negative. So we looked at M and N and realized that they'd be the same for axial, different for eccentric, and filled those in. Then we went over here to PY, which was exerting simply a concentrated load at the end of a beam. And we use our moments to find out what our moment was going to be. Q, well, I'm going to put Q in here for M. So Q we put in for M, either in M over S or MC over I, and ended up with this. And again, M and N were recipients differently of the compression or the tension because they're on opposite sides of the neutral axis at the most uppermost and lowermost locations. And on the leftmost location that has the maximum bending moment that's applied. Right here, this Q. Finally, we added them all up, all the ones for M, all the ones for N, and we ended up with these final values. Well, I hope that this has helped your understanding of strength of materials and combined stresses. And keep watching for more videos and lectures and problems. Thank you.